Welcome to WTSA, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly being held here in New Delhi. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Safia Hussein, who is the Chief Impact Officer and co-founder of Carrier. First of all, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Safia, tell me a little bit about Carrier and what it does and, and what its ambitions are and, uh, and what it's achieved so far. Definitely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, at Carrier, we believe in giving people access to dignified digital work and learning opportunities. Um, so, in India, there's a huge problem of poverty. And what we realized is that we could bring jobs not only to low-income people but also to a lot of youth that are here in India today by connecting them directly to the AI ecosystem. AI models today need hundreds and thousands of hours and rows of data to actually make them work. And we realized, well, if we can bring those jobs to smartphones, make them fully flexible, make them accessible to everyone, and fundamentally pay really high wages, we can actually give people the financial cushion they need to move out of poverty. Um, so we built our app. Uh, we actually started in 2017 as a research project, but we launched about two years ago with our app. So far, we've had over 40,000 people working on our platform, and we've been able to disperse over a million dollars in wages to these people. Um, for us, really, our, our goal is to understand what the future of work can really look like for people who are currently either under or unemployed. And I think with the boom of AI, this is a big question we all need to be answering. What is it that we're going to do to make sure that more and more people don't slip into unemployment? We really see digital as a viable opportunity for people to continue not only getting extra income, but really contributing to AI in the way that I think AI had its vision, right? AI is supposed to be for everyone. Technology is supposed to be for everyone. So can we really change that equation and make it so? So you've had a pretty impressive rollout. How do people find out about you? Uh, so we work mainly as a B2B company. Uh, so we'll work with a lot of big tech, academia, and governments as well. So they'll kind of reach out to us as a data service provider. Um, but we also are really uh, looped into the NGO ecosystem. So we work directly with self-help groups and farmer producer organizations, and even with the government to make sure that we're targeting the right people with our work. So you're talking about the right people. So these are under uh, underrepresented people in the workforce, people in rural communities you were mentioning, is that right? Absolutely. Um, and as well, I mean, we try as much as possible to focus on those who are marginalized and left out of the formal economy, right? So you have a lot of people who may not be able to physically work, they may have caregiving opportunities at home, or they really, really need that kind of flexible work. We try and provide that opportunity. And how is the pay structure? How is that worked out? So for us, it's really important to try and give the highest wages possible. So currently we pay a minimum of $5 per hour, which is the highest in the entire global data industry. Uh, and for us, uh, what we're really trying to do is give people as much of a cushion that they can. So typically we're trying to give people anywhere between 10 to 30 percent on their normal annual income. And how do you uh, work out how long they've been working for? So we do everything on kind of a task-based system. So everything happens to the phone. Um, when we have people on our app, we kind of have their background, we have their demographics, and we know what skills they have. So we're able to automatically match them to different kinds of jobs that they have. And they kind of know at the outset, okay, let's say this bucket of work, it's gonna take me two hours, it's gonna give me a thousand rupees. And they'll usually have anywhere between one to two weeks to complete that so that it can be at their own convenience. And what about your hiring process? How does that work exactly? So what's great about our app is that literally anyone can do this work, and that's really what we want to maintain it by. So anyone that is low income, and we do have a bit of a low income verification process, uh, has the opportunity to come on our app and get work from us. Because right now um, we have a, I guess, uh, us reaching out model. Uh, people can't natively enter the app. We only work with our NGO partners and with government partners to onboard people so that we can really be sure that this work is going to benefit them. And assessing the level of work, assessing the, the quality of work, how do you do that? So that's been fun. In terms of assessing levels, we've actually um, began to come up with specific levels of work that exist within the entire data industry. So now we have around level one to 10 of gradations of different type of work. We skill people on the platform itself. And we also have a special group of data workers that we specially train to validate the original data sets that workers create. So we always ensure we have at least 97% accuracy. And you're based in, in Bangalore, is yes, that right? Yes. So are you working on Indian time? Is, is, is there, or is it time critical? Or how does it work exactly? A lot of our clients right now are in India because one of our big specialties is uh, Indian languages. So that's a really huge boom in the AI space. But we do work globally as well. Uh, we have some work happening in Kenya and Ethiopia as well. 
Excellent. And what are your plans for the future? Uh, I think our plans for the future are really to help I think people see AI and digital as a viable path for how people can come out of unemployment. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of standardization, especially when it comes to ethics. And we really hope that we can be the model that shows people, hey, you can be this kind of company, you can still make money, and you can actually ensure that people have a dignified and living wage. Now, you're speaking at an AI for good uh, <laughs> event yes. here a little bit later on today. Yes. Uh, what are you hoping people will take away from that? I think what I'm really hoping people will take away is that we're at this critical inflection point right now where this world of AI can either go in a direction where it really isolates a lot of people in the world, or perhaps we're at this moment where all the people in this convening can come together and say, let's put together some standards and let's think about how we can actually include everyone in this revolution. Well, Safia Hussein, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio and we look forward to catching up with you again very soon, I hope. Thank you so much. Thank you and good luck with everything. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.